in this lesson we'll study about the curves its necessity functions and types so the curves are an essential part of the railway construction so we have to in detail study what are curves why they are required in the railways what are the functions of these curves and the different types of curves that are present right so to get started with first let us understand what is the definition of a curve it's very simple a arch shape or a geometrical arch shape that is provided is nothing but a curve and this arch shape is provided whenever there is change in alignment or change in the gradient alignment is in horizontal distance and the gradient is in vertical distance so what is the actual definition of curve the geometrical arches provided at the change in alignment or gradient of a track this is called as your curve so whenever change in alignment is there we go for horizontal curve and whenever change in gradient is there we go for what is called as vertical curve so the details about these types will study further in this lesson right so curves will play a very important role in the geometric called design of the track so we have to make sure that we design the curve to provide safety and convenience to the traffic so based on the topography of the railway track right now let's see what are the functions of providing the railway track here in the definition only we understood but let us see in detail or see point wise what are the functions of providing the curves right the first function is to provide gradual change in direction so whenever there is change in direction say the railway track is like this and then we have to change the direction to this we cannot have a sharp thing like this so we'll have to have a curve for this transition so whenever we change the direction we need curve we have to provide curve then to provide gradual change in gradient so whenever there is change in slope there also we need to provide curve understood so that is your change in gradient then third one for easy turning of the trains if it is like this turning of the trains will become very difficult because of the bogey length right so to provide easy turning turnings of trains we need to provide the curves and the last function is to provide the comfort to the passengers if there are no smooth curves or abrupt change in directions happen there will be problem or comfort of the passengers will be affected so to give a proper comfort to the passengers who are traveling to the train also we need curves so these are the four important functions of curves right now let us discuss what is the necessity of providing curves let us see in detail so it is always desirable to provide a straight route for the track so that you achieve a economy say it is in the cost of construction or maintenance or transportation but what will happen the use of curves will become absolutely necessary at change in alignments as well as what change in gradients under certain conditions so we have to provide curves under certain conditions without which we will not be able to construct the railway track now what are those places let us see one by one so the first one is suppose there is some natural or artificial obstacle that is coming in the route of a straight alignment of the track and to bypass it we need to what provide the curve so to bypass any natural or artificial obstacle that is coming in the lane of the straight track say for example we have a straight track like this right here in between say there is some river or a lake now we cannot cross this lake like this so we'll have to change the direction like this and then come back like this right so we need to provide the curve say or if it is a artificial say for example we have a building here already which we cannot destroy so in that case also we need to have a Curve. so that is your first necessity the second necessity is to provide easier gradient by diversions from the straight track suppose we provide a straight track in gradient sometimes the gradients are, will become very difficult you have to give very steep gradients or very unbelievable gradients so in order to have ease in the gradients or easier gradients we have to go for what for easier gradients we have to go for curves next the third one is 
to avoid excessive cutting or filling suppose there is a ground level like this now the track is like this so to make sure that you don't do too much of cutting or you don't do too much of uh, filling for this ground we have to go for curves so places where lot of cutting is coming into picture or lot of filling is coming into picture those regions you can avoid by just changing the direction of the track so to avoid excessive cutting or filling which is coming in way of your straight track when you want to do the changing in the alignment so here also curves are necessary next moving on to the fourth point so in order to avoid costly lands say for example there are some routes in between the land is owned by someone and for the government to purchase that land it is becoming very very expensive so in that case what we can do we can just change our direction and go on to the cheaper lands so to avoid costly lands which are coming in the route of the railway track we have to go for curves right the next one is to provide the track on stable and safe side of the hill by changing the alignment say sometimes when we are doing the track laying on the hilly areas in some places it will not be safe or stable it will not be there the land will not be stay for stable so in those areas you will not be able to provide the railway track so you have to go for curves so that those places will be avoided okay stable and safe sites in specially hilly areas so here we have to provide in order to avoid them we have to go for in order to avoid any unsafe places we have to go for the curves right the next point and the last point is in some places where you are getting your rivers lakes etc in order to go for the bridges on this also we can go for the curves understood so this is the necessity of providing the curves next let us see a small topic that's your grade compensation on curves so whenever curve coming we know what is grade is nothing but your gradient or the slope which you are providing so we have already seen there are different types of gradients ruling momentum pusher and station yard gradients so in curves what will happen we have to do grade compensation grade compensation is nothing but the reduction in the gradient what is it the reduction in gradients on curved portions of a railway track right now why we have to do this is on curved portion of railway track what will happen we will need extra power to pull the train due to more tractive resistance on curves what will happen there will be more tractive resistance so in order to overcome this resistance we need more power to the railway engines so therefore in order to overcome this increased tractive resistance to a certain level and to pull the train with the same speed what we have to do we have to reduce the gradient on the curves so this reduction in the gradient is nothing but known as your grade compensation on the curves normally this grade compensation in indian railways is denoted in the form of percentage per degree of curves what is degree of curves i'll tell you in further part of the lesson so normally we express the grade compensation in the percentage degree of curves so the recommendations what we have in indian railways are if it is a broad grade railway track 0.04 percentage reduction we do then if it is a moderate gauge track we need 0.03 percentage reduction and if it is the third type that is the narrow gauge then we have to go for 0.02 percentage reduction okay so these are the standards of grade compensation in case of indian railways okay understood so this is about your grade compensation next we'll discuss about the types of curves see basically the curves have been divided into two types one is the horizontal curve and the other is the vertical curve horizontal curve is normally provided for change in alignment and vertical curves are normally provided for change in gradients as we have discussed in the definition of the curve so there are five types of horizontal curves simple compound reverse deviation and transition curves out of which the transition curve is of more important in railways so we'll deal this in the separate lessons right then in the second type so let me call this as capital a and this as capital b so in the second type the vertical curve you have two types the summit curve and the sag or the valley curve okay so 
we'll discuss in detail about all these types other than the transition curves. Uh, transition curves slowly in the subsequent lessons, we'll be discussing it. Okay, let's see one by one. First one is your simple curve. Okay, so simple curve are normally your circular curves. See now here, see this black one from here to here is your simple curve. Normally, your simple curves will have a constant radius. Say if I take this as the center of the curve, say O, so this will also be R and this will be also be R. So this is the start point of the curve. This is the end point of the curve. So between two tangents or two straights, you can say two straights, you will have a simple curve. Understood? So it is a single arc with constant radius or uniform radius circular curve with uniform radius we can call it as a simple curve so now this type of curves may lay between two tangents as i showed you here two tangents are nothing but two straight lines or between two transition curves so details about transition curve will anyways study further so a simple curve can be present between two tangents or between two transition curves normally the length of this say from T1 to T2, length of T1 to T2 or the length of the simple curve is represented by the length of its radius or by the degree of the curve. So we can represent the length of a simple curve in two ways. One is by length of its radius and the other one is by the degree of curve. Okay, so what is the degree of the curve? The angle subtended at its center. So this thing is called as the degree of curve. The angle subtended by the center to the end points is known as the degree of curve. Normally what we do is suppose we take a 30 meter length of arc. So length of arc if it is 30 meter then the radius of the curve is equal to 1746.5 pi d where r is what the radius of curve in meters. This is very important. We have to substitute this in meter then we will get the degree of curve in degrees. So if you substitute the degree of curve in degrees, you will get the radius of the curve in meters. Say for example, if we want to find the length of radius or the radius of curve R and the degree given or capital D given to us is say 5 degree. So what will happen? Your radius will be what? 1746.5 divided by this we have to substitute in degree only. So 5 degree. So we will get what? 349.3. What is this? meters we get it in meters understood so this is about the simple curve and how to find the length of the simple curve see normally where we will have to provide simple curve is wherever there is change in change in alignment everywhere where there is change in alignment we have to go for a simple curve in case of either your plane track or in case of your hilly track so in both places we have to go for the simple curve so this is about the first type of horizontal curve what we have. So let me call it as A, capital A is horizontal curve and one is your type of curve. Next, moving on to the next one is the compound curve. So this is the second type in case of horizontal curve. See, this is very similar to your simple curve. These are also circular curves, right? So these are also what? Circular curves, but they doesn't have constant radius or uniform radius. So no uniform or constant radius so in simple terms if you want to say these are compound curves are made of two or more simple curves okay so the compound curves are made up of what two or more simple curves so the circular curves having different radii is called as your compound curves again these are used for what change in the directions now in this figure you take t1a this is one tangent okay and your T2C is say your second tangent, right? If you observe from T1 to P, there is a radius of RS and the center is O1 and from, let me change the color, uh, from P to T2, right? There is one more curve of radius RL and the center as O2. If you observe the radius of this is not equal to the radius of this. So the radius T1P, that's nothing but your RS is not equal to your TL that is equal to the radius of your PT2 and also the centers are not equal. So these are basically two simple curves. This is one simple curve and this is another simple curve. Two simple curves together have made a compound curve. Now for this curve, first curve, the tangents are what? 
the tangents for the first car are m and t1 and mp and here for the, the tangents of the second car are what pn and nt2 so these are what tangent of the curve 2 and these are the tangents of the curve 1 so that's as simple as this now where we go for compound curve why instead of simple curve we are going for compound curve is important so in places or in topographical areas to avoid cutting through hard rocks if there is any cutting through hard rocks when you want to go for a normal simple curve you can go for what your compound curves okay so cutting through hard rocks then heavy cutting or filling if there is any region where your heavy cutting or filling is uh, coming into picture then also you can go for your compound curves change the radius and provide a curve in that particular area so in these places i'll write it as suitability in these places we can go for the compound curve right understood next moving on to the third one third one is what reverse curve so let us take it as a3 reverse curve the name itself is indicating if you observe simple figure so this is also combination of two or more circular curves again circular curves they may have same or different radii so both curves may have same radii or they may have different radii here but the only thing is their direction direction will be different okay this is very very important their direction will be different in opposite direction or i can say opposite direction if you observe here there is a curve right i'll call this curve as the curve 1 t1 p for which the tangents are a m and m p and o1 is the center of this say i'll call this as r1 and r1 next move here see this is moving in this direction but whereas when you come to the second curve it is moving in the opposite direction right so the second curve is moving in the opposite direction here the tangents are np and nt1 and the center is o2 so let's call this as r2 r2 so here there may be chance that r1 is equal to r2 or there may be chance that r1 is not equal to r2 right but the direction of the curve 1 and the direction of the curve 2 will be different right these are nothing but your reverse in reverse curves what will happen there will be a common tangent this m p n if you observe m p n if you observe this is a common tangent so for both curves you will have one tangent which is in common right then now where this type of curve is suitable so let's write suitability so these type of curves are suitable for crossovers so in case of railway tracks wherever there is crossovers in your station yards what is crossover say the sort of for example a railway track is going like this and the other railway track is going like this and this has to go here right and this has to come here so what will happen this is your crossovers or your points and crossing so in that case we need to go for crossovers also this is one place where we have to go for reverse curves and the second one is for the alignment in hilly areas so whenever there is some change in alignment in hilly areas then also we have to go for what reverse curves so this is the suitability understood then moving on to the next one the fourth one in bit a this is the fourth one in bit a that is the deviation curve uh, before uh, telling this i want to mention one more thing your uh, reverse curves has different names to it reverse curve has different names to it so i want to mention them to you so it is also called as s curves because they are in the shape of yes right or they're also called as serpentine serpentine curves so these are the different names of your reverse curves now moving on to this what are these these are nothing but your deviation curves so a circular curve which consists of two reverse curves two reverse curves with or without a straight in between is known as your deviation curves so like this say for example this is a curve like this and this is a curve like this so here if you observe there are two reverse curves here also there are there's a reverse curve here also there is a reverse curve so in between two reverse curves there is a straight here some places there will be no straight here straight is joined by straight line the joined by straight line here it is joined by the large radius of curve see here if you observe the large radius of curve again here in the shape of s here in the shape of s so basically two reverse curve if they are joined by a straight or a large radius of curve 
or if there is nothing in between also then they are called as what your derived curves in derived curves also you have different types broken back curves broken back curves is in between if there is something they, they will call it as your broken back curves understood so let me write the definition circular curves consisting of two reverse curves with or without a straight length in between are called as what your deviation curves now where this type of curves are uh, useful is to keep the alignment of the track now say for example mainly these are used or suitable now suppose there there is a say railway track like this here some accident has happened or some repair work has happened then in order to get this train back to this track in the same direction if we want to move we have to here go for a derived deviation curve this is basically providing a deviation from the original place so in places of accidents major repair works we go for what your deviation curves understood so this is where we have to go through the deviation curve next moving on to the last type in the horizontal curves is the transition curve as i told you mostly transition curve the details of the transition curve will deal in the further classes for now you just have to know what is a transition curve so a curve which is having a radius varying gradually from infinity to a finite value this is called as what your transition curve a curve whose radius varies gradually from what infinity to a finite value is called as your transition curve this infinity finite value this finite value will be back to your back to the radius of the circular curve which is correcting it this is very very important what finite value will come whatever was the circular curve whatever was the radius of the circular curve to that it will come back okay why is this majorly given is to provide ease for a easy and gradual change in direction what will happen is suppose there are two straights and you are giving a circular curve say for example this is the original circular curve or a simple curve this is a tangent and this is a tangent so what will happen we are coming here in the tangent suddenly a curve is coming and then we are going back this will not give comfort to the passenger so what we will do is we will gradually change it and give a radius equal to the circular curve okay this figure is not to the scale you don't bother about it say for example here instead of giving like this we give a transition so from one point to another point we give a transition here the radius here the radius will be infinity whereas when we go here the radius will become equal to the radius of the circular understood the name itself is indicating that it is a transition happening right this this transition curves are also called as ease meant curves so for easy movement of the trains from the straight to the circular curve or from one curve to another curve we have to provide the transition curve understood so more details about the transition curves will uh, deal in the further classes so this was all about your horizontal curves now let us move on to the vertical curves in vertical curves as i told you there are two types the first one is what your summit curves or they are also called as crest curves and the second one is your sag or valley curves okay so let's add or here sag or valley curves now what is a summit curve if a raising gradient see this is what raising gradient this is what a falling gradient so if a raising gradient is joining the fa falling gradient then it is a summit curve summit is nothing but peak the actual meaning of the term summit is what peak so we are reaching a peak and then going down so this type are called as your summit curve this can be raising gradient with a falling gradient or sometimes it can be raising with raising okay so first one is raising with falling second one is raising with raising or the third one can be raising with a straight so in all these cases the type of curve we provide is your summit curve so generally your vertical curves are nothing but to have a change in the 
what gradient right so this is about your summit curve coming on to sag curve or the valley curve what is happening here a falling gradient is meeting a raising gradient so falling is meeting the the raising gradient or see this raising with raising is this see this is also raising then again it is raising right so raising with straight will be what like this say straight line like this so similar to that here falling with raising or what you can do falling with falling that will be the second case say this will be the first case the second case will be what falling with falling and the third case will be what falling with a straight right on all these cases the type of curve what we give is nothing but your vertical curve correct now let's see more depth now if you see this uh, shape what is this shape we are getting a convexity but whereas here we are getting what concavity convexity here it is upwards whereas here the convexity is what downwards okay that is the major difference so what you can uh, write is the vertical curves having their convexity upward is called as summit curve or crest curve or it's also called as spur curves okay and if the vertical curves are having their convexity downwards then they are called as sag curves or valley curves so in in all the three cases here a, here a raising gradient is joining the falling gradient or it may be raising with raising or it may be raising with straight whereas here it will be falling with raising falling with falling or falling with the straight understood so this is all about the vertical curves vertical curves come under the category b so in that we have two types so hope all the types of curves are clear to you now thank you